Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now before we start today's video I'd just like to issue a quick apology. I know it's been uh, over a week, I think almost two weeks since I last uploaded a video. Uh, and you guys probably noticed there has been a bit of a slowdown. I was uploading sort of every day, then every other day and then... Uh, it's gone sort of once a week. Uh, the reason for that is I'm just very busy with work at the moment um, and how I often do these videos is I sit down and do a whole lump of the <clears throat> pardon me, a whole lump of them in one go. Um, but I haven't had a chance to do that. But fortunately it's a bank holiday weekend this weekend in the UK and that's going to be an extra day to just sit down uh, and just get a load of recording done. So that's it, that's my apology, sorry guys. Uh, let's get on to the video now. So, today's basic tactics video will cover the plasma gun. Now, some of my regular subscribers might say, well, you've already done a video on plasma guns. Uh, that's very true. Uh, but it's not part of this series. Um, and I'd like to sort of do the plasma gun in the format that this series has been in, which is what is the plasma gun, uh, where you should use it, and what it combos well with. So that's the sort of reason why I'm redoing it, but and the last video was more of a melter compared with plasma gun video. So anyway, long story short, I'm just doing it again. It's going to be slightly different, but a lot of points here will be probably repeated from the last video. But anyway, so what is the plasma gun? Well, it costs 15 points and it is a 24 inch range, strength 7, AP 2, rapid fire. Okay, so that's pretty good. It is the most expensive of the special weapons, uh, but it was also potentially one of the most powerful. The plasma gun is meant, well, traditionally was good for killing monstrous creatures. You can see that with the AP2 weapon profile. You can see that with the uh, longer range of 24 inches. And you can see that with uh, rapid fire. Because essentially... The plasma gun is strength 7, so it can can threaten armor, but it's better at wounding things on 2s. I mean, originally it was designed for killing Terminators, and we're talking, you know, game-wise, not fluff-wise. Originally it was designed for killing Terminators, uh, and then obviously with things like Tyranids coming in, and a lot of their monstrous creatures being toughness uh, 5 or 6, you know, that's when the plasma gun became the sort of traditional monster hunter weapon and now obviously it's been superseded by grav in many ways but we don't have grav as the guard so for the guard the plasma gun is still the premier anti-monster creature uh, very few if any in fact no monsters creatures duh it's ap2 no monsters creatures will get an armor save against this and most monsters creatures don't have an invulnerable save the only one which has a really good invulnerable save potentially is the uh, Riptide. Of course, you know, we all know the Riptide's got everything it needs. It's got guns. It can. It's got high strength. It's got high toughness. But you know, basically, this is this gun will kill most monsters creatures, which is good. Uh, it'll wound most of them on twos or threes. So there you go. Uh, the only monsters creatures that doesn't really need to worry about this are gargantuan monsters creatures, things like the Wraith Knight. But even so, mass plasma gun is still fairly viable versus a, a Wraith Knight. You know, you can still wound it on uh, fives, and it's not going to get its armor save. So there we go. Uh, so there we go. That's what the plasma gun is. Um, it's also it's, it's it's one thing to mention of note is the fact it's rapid fire, which means the plasma gun is quite it's quite versatile because the rapid fire allows it to either be used to fire at long range of twenty four inches, and it, that complements well with las guns, um, or it can be used to get in close and personal, and it can double tap at um, twelve inch range. And there's nothing quite as awesome a display of firepower for the guard as being able to bring four or five plasma guns to bear and unleash them all at close range most things that you come across won't survive that and that's why the plasma gun comes with that 15 point price tag because 
anything, all but the toughest armor and all but the toughest monstrous creatures will be hurt by this thing. And, of course, it can shred infantry, space marines, and below easily. And the elites, you know, crisis suits don't like these things. Uh, Terminators don't like these things. Uh, all the, all, you know, sort of high, no, nothing likes facing down the plasma gun. So, what does, uh, where, where should we be, the, where, what does it combo with? What does it combo with first? So, looking at heavy weapons, the plasma gun doesn't combo well with the mortar for obvious reasons. The mortar is a long range, indirect fire, anti-infantry weapon. If you buy a mortar and then a plasma gun, it basically means that those those things are never going to shoot at the same target. So just don't, just not going to go into it too much. There's no point in going for the mortar. Heavy bolter, I would say the same thing. There's no point in putting the plasma with a heavy bolter. Um, it just it's not shooting at the same target. The heavy bolter is designed for smashing uh, infantry, and it will struggle against armor, and it will definitely struggle against monstrous creatures. A cheap, semi-viable option which I have experimented with is plasma gun, auto cannon combo. The reason for this is that the plasma gun and the auto cannon both are strength seven, and that means that they'll both be shooting. They'll both be perfectly viable against similar toughness opponents. The issue is, is that. The auto cannon is really designed for just smashing some infantry in the face and for shredding light transports. And if you're spending 15 points on a plasma gun and then only shooting at like a rhino, it just doesn't really work well. If you want your auto cannon squads or infantry squads to be targeting light transports, the best thing you can do is to get auto cannon grenade launcher. But having said that, there is some argument to be made for having auto cannon plasma gun. Some. Your mileage may vary. I've experimented with it and I've had medium success. I would give that combo a solid okay rating. 5 out of 10, maybe 5.5. Um, with the missile launcher, the plasma gun can do well with missile launcher. But I have personally never done it. I've never comboed a plasma gun and a missile launcher. Simply, which doesn't really make sense. Which actually doesn't make sense when you think about it. Because the missile launcher is quite good at hunting monsters creatures. Because the only monsters creature that gets a save against a missile launcher is a riptide. So if you're making a dedicated anti-monster creature platoon. Maybe comboing missile launchers and plasma guns would would work maybe simply because that's kind of what they're both designed to kill but I've never done it so I can't tell you in person if it works uh, I'd probably say it's best to do the next combination which is uh, plasma gun and las cannon now this is a very expensive combination but you do get what you pay for you'll be paying 20 points for the las cannon and 15 points for the plasma gun, which means on a basic infantry squad, you'll be spending 85 points. 50 points for the base squad, 15 points for the plasma gun, and 20 points for the las cannon. Now, this combo is deadly. I have been running 1500 point battles recently at the local club, and I have played three now with my two platoons of four plasma guns, four las cannons, and you know, three or four, uh, three primary psychers and two astropaths, and then a, whatever's left is wang it into conscripts. I think I've got about 100 conscripts on top of that. Um, and this works really well because those two platoons basically guarantee me one thing will die a turn, guaranteed. So, because what happens is the plasma guns can... I prescience both platoons. I just put everything into prescience. I don't care about anything else. Prescience both platoons. And then I tend to put monster hunter tank hunter on both platoons. Or ignores cover on both. 
normally monsters of tank hunter because i'm shooting these things at big badass things and guaranteed you know most of the time the plasma guns are going to be in range from the get-go with four shots and the last cannons are going to be in range from the get-go with four shots which means we're going to be hitting with we're going to be hitting a target with three plasma guns and three last cannons straight away and often we're this is we're shoot often we're shooting at something like um you know, a medium vehicle or a medium sort of monstrous creature. Uh, even a Riptide, though. I brought a Riptide down uh, in my last game when I fired both of the platoons at the Riptide for, in one turn. And I just hit it with six plasma shots, six lads cannon shots. And then I had re-rolls to wound. I wounded it with nearly every single one. And it just went down. Just went down. Uh... You know, and even if you're shooting out just one Riptide with that, you can you can take four wounds off it. You know, you can take four wounds off a Riptide reliably with that because you'll hit with three, and then you'll wound with two, but you'll get a re-roll, and then you've got a, a good chance of getting an extra wound on that re-roll with the plasma gun. But let's assume you don't; you'll still get definitely two wounds. And, say, uh, and then the last cannons will do about the same. Last cannons should get you five wounds, so you should get between five and six wounds with one platoon of four plasma guns, four las cans, and then uh, you get rerolls that he gets his armor save. He doesn't get the armor save, and he'll probably only have a five plus invun save, and he may not have paid for stimulant injectors, which means you'll be doing three to four wounds on a riptide. That's not bad. You fight, you know, you can, you can combine that maybe with one of my big blobs of 50 conscripts for some first rank fire, second rank fire. Any psychic dice left over, we might have some prescience going off. Or we'll definitely have some monster to tank hunter potentially, you know. And we can throw down another 100, 150 last gun shots. And, you know, we can finish that riptide off. So it is possible. Um, but anyway, all I'm saying is, I know I've gone on a bit of a tangent here. I'm a little bit rusty at doing these videos, but all I'm saying is, a las cannon and plasma gun combo works very nicely and I covered that again I've also covered that in my other plasma video and I've covered it in the uh, las cannon video so there we go you're paying through the nose for las cannon plasma gun but it is a very powerful combination now where do we want to put these plasma guns in our platoon well they definitely have a home in infantry squads, simply because you do. If you want to go and do the Las Cavern Plasma combo, that's the best place to do it. So certainly, we're facing infantry squads. That goes without saying. Pardon me. Um, they have some viability in a special weapon squad. I have run plasma special weapon squads before, uh, and I've basically. I've run them on foot, and they do okay. Uh, and I've also run them in Chimeras, and they do okay. But I always felt like if I was running three plasma guns and putting them in a Chimera, I might as well take veterans. So think about that. Uh, and I have also put them in special weapons squads and dropped them out of the back of a Vendetta. That makes quite a tasty combo, that, because... If you think about it, the Vendetta is, is, a, is a flying three twin link LAS cannons and Special Weapon Squad is three plasma guns. So what you can do is you can fly with your Vendetta, shoot three twin link LAS cannons, and then next turn, shoot another three twin LAS cannons, maybe go into hover mode, drop you guys out the back, and put three to six plasma bolts into a target. That will generally bring something down, or it will very, very badly hurt something. So there you go. Very, you know, very a lot of applications to put them in the special weapons squad. Of course, it's very, it's quite expensive, but I think it is the cheapest way of bringing uh, three plasma guns to the field. The only place I don't think they belong in the platoon is in the uh, platoon command squad, simply because um, your platoon command squads are already going to be a hot target. Simply because any smart player that you play against will instantly try and get rid of your orders from the get-go. Uh, so your blue commands are already going to be a hot target. Um, and then giving them all plasma guns means you can't protect your plasma guns. Because 
You've only got five guys in the squad and four of them are going to be using plasma guns or one of them's going to be in your officer. And it just makes it really expensive. Uh, I covered in the Flamer video the only way I think Platoon Command, the only equipment I think Platoon Command Squad should really be considered being equipped with is, you know, Flamers because they're relatively cheap. But even then, I don't really like it. So that's it. Anyway, so just to go a quick recap. Plasma gun costs 15 points, it fires a strength 7 AP2 shot, it's rapid fire which allows you to double tap at close range. This uh, combos well, generally speaking the best combination is the last cannon, because both weapons are high strength, both weapons are low AP, which means combined together they will cut through most big targets and will definitely damage uh, most vehicles and uh, shred infantry if brought in high enough numbers. It's a very expensive combination, but you generally get your money's worth if you back it up with psychic support. Uh, I believe that they are best served in blob platoons of 40 guys, four plasmas and four last cannons, backed up by a primary psyker. And um, they can do well in special weapon squads, but I recommend against putting them in platoon command squads. And that's it, generally speaking. One final uh, mention is that if you are planning on running a mobile blob uh, and you don't want heavy weapons in your blob, uh, it, it would be a good idea to consider having a plasma gun and a plasma pistol in the same squad. Simply because I know a lot of people don't like plasma pistols because they're 15 points for a one-shot plasma. I understand that. But if you are trying to get the most out of your plasma guns, you want to be moving forward every turn, and you take a blob of, let's say, let's say you take two or three blobs of 30 guys, and you give each each squad a plasma gun and a plasma pistol, um, that means that at close range, each one of those blobs will be putting out nine plasma shots. And what happens is the plasma gun essentially becomes the pseudo-heavy weapon, and the plasma pistol becomes the sort of pseudo-special weapon of the squad. Uh, it can work. Plasma spam can work. It's just expensive money-wise getting the models and expensive points-wise. But there you go. You can always back those plasma. If you really want to go full plasma spam, you could have three platoon. This is just spitballing here. Going off on a tangent now, guys. But if you wanted to go full plasma sp uh, spam, you could easily take three platoons, 30 guys in each platoon, three plasma guns in each platoon, three plasma pistols in each platoon, backed up by... A priest with a plasma gun, backed up by a commissar with a plasma pistol, backed up by, on a serious note, by two or three armoured sentinels per platoon, each one with a plasma cannon. And that way you are just going all out on the plasma guns. That's a lot of plasma. Definitely good against, uh, you know, someone who wants to spam tyranny monster creatures at you. Anyway, uh, there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys found it informative. Uh, I'm going to try and do a big block of recording, so hopefully you guys will have a fairly steady stream of content uh, to indulge yourselves with over the next few days and weeks. So thank you very much, and I'll see you guys next time.